Yeah. Exciting day. Um, I think it's just another step of momentum for the program. Finishing off a great season uh, in a lot of ways. Obviously, the bowl victory, and then it piles right into a signing day. Uh, and we're really, really happy with how this all turned out. I do want to start with thanking a, a coaching staff for a lot of work and especially our recruiting staff, that department, there's a lot that goes into these relationships and details, um, a lot of work, um, being able to land a big time signing class of so Cole Moore, Mike Dock, JT, Josh, Jalen Moore, Austin, Nick Bristol, Jake, Namasnack, Derek, all that crew did a phenomenal job throughout the last year. And sometimes more than that, uh, to be able to, to finish this thing and feel really, really good about it. And we've got great people around here that work really hard. So I wanted to thank them for sure. I'll take you through each guy here. Um, start on offense with the quarterback, Aiden Childs. Long relationship. Um, did a great job of helping to recruit this class. But this guy had a phenomenal year as a senior. Won a bunch of games. I think he fits us in a lot of different ways. He's talented, can throw it. Um, not scared to run it, athletic that way. I think he's going to be a, a, a good size. He's all a 6'5 now. Um, he's going to be here in January, and he's a leader. And he helped with this recruiting class, and you could see it when we got a chance to see him live play during the fall. So leadership qualities that, you know, that matters at quarterback. Couldn't be more excited about him. Wanted to get some young receivers in the program. Got four of them. All of them, I think, can make a huge difference for them. Three of these four receivers will be here in January as well. Zachary Carr, Pittsburgh, kind of uh, Northern California. Reminds us a little bit of Anthony Gould. Kind of got speed, real speed, grit, loves football, tough, had a good year. Um, he'll, he'll be here in January. Montrell Hatton down there in Carthage, Texas. Awesome home visit with him. Uh, before we took off for the bowl game, him and his family, beautiful people. This guy is talented, was on a really good team. They won a lot of games. He's, you know, he's used to winning in that program. Feel like he can stretch the field. Uh, so we feel awesome about him. Taz, all the way out, uh, Fort Lauderdale. Went and saw him before the bowl game. Taz Reddick's uh, speedster. He'll be here in January. Uh, feel like he can change direction, good hands, really good player. And then to finish that receiver crew up, David Wells up here in Washington, Lakes High School, comes from a really good program. Saw him in a summer camp and got, uh, just felt really confident seeing him compete. Uh, skill set wise, he's got it, can run and catch and all those things. So really good. The four receivers, it was a priority for us to get some younger guys that can run and three of them being here in January. I can see a couple of those guys competing to play here in the fall. Uh, tight end wise, Cooper Jensen, again, from Washington. I think Washington's got good football players up there. I think it's a good spot for us to be able to recruit location wise, climate wise. And Cooper was one of the earliest commits we had in this class. Feel like his upside is big, uh, can run, he's tall, continue to get stronger and, and, uh, and heavier, which is perfect for what, what we want to do. Uh, stretch the field, but he's physical enough to play at the line of scrimmage. And you know how we like to use the tight end. He's a great addition that way. Great family as well. Two old linemen. Really like these guys because I think they fit our mold too of making the game physical. Start with Jake Vanderson over there in Montana. Uh, came out on a visit. Really um, he enjoyed the atmosphere. I think, again, I go back to the fit. I think the old line room itself helped recruit. Jacob, just in him experience and being around our guys, he's going to fit there. Athletic enough to play tackle, physical enough to play inside. He's got some flexibility that way. And then Xander, Esty, uh, like this guy, we saw him at camp in, in the summertime, came up to one of our camps and just the ability to compete, athletic, physical, um, really good addition. We like both those guys. I think Xander, again, maybe starts interior wise. But I think he's athletic enough to play on the on the edge. And so we like to, again, the youth, a lot of players there on offense that we think will make a difference for us. Flipping to the other side defensively, had some guys early on that we really wanted to chase. And big picture, we wanted depth at every spot. I'll start here with the D-line, start with Thomas Collins, 
our international coming over from Sweden, uh, made his visit out here late spring, uh, early summertime. I think it helped that we had Simon Sandberg on the team that had just experienced, you know, coming overseas and, and playing. So I, Simon did help us a ton in the recruitment of Thomas. He'll be here in January, uh, physical, athletic, explosive. I think he can help us pretty early. Jojo, Abraham Johnson over from Salt Lake. Same thing. We got to see him in person at camp as well, competing. Um, I think he's got a huge upside. He's a good, good sized kid, physical, athletic, a um, little bit newer to football going through it in high school, uh, but the upside is there. Uh, quality family, uh, had some connections actually within our staff here that knew the family well. I think that helped us. And then you end with Kelsey Howard, Las Vegas. Um, yeah, a good player. I mean, his tape jumps out all of the size you need, physicality, athleticism, beautiful personality. Um, him and his family, I think they just really fell in love with Corvallis when they visited in June. Got the chance to see him down in Las Vegas because he's from, from the place. Um, a great addition. He'll be here in January as well. So both Thomas and Kelsey being here in January, be able to get some great reps in the spring at the line of scrimmage. Zakaya earlier, he came out really with a, one of his team. I don't know if we were totally on his radar last spring, but he could see in the place. I think he really enjoyed it. We got him back out here for an official visit. Um, went and saw him before the bowl game trip. Uh, you know, again, family great, plays good football, coming from a really good pro uh, program. Got all the levers you need, got real length, fits what we want to do on the edge of the line of scrimmage, can affect the passer. Uh, so it felt awesome about being able to land him on the edge. Nico Taylor, the one older one currently that's on the list, had a big time year. Uh, edge player, has some ties to California growing up, but played out there, Kansas, and uh, got to see him and the family before we got to the bowl game. We feel this one's a really good get and an immediate impact player. He'll be here in January. Again, edge of the defense, affect the passer. He's got length toughness, smart, um, and so he's our junior college player currently. Uh, Leonard Ahu out there in the island. Leonard came out in the summer as well. He's planning on taking a more mission, which is, which is fine. I think that's awesome kind of life experience for those guys to be able to do. But we also, you know, he can play the game now. Uh, linebacker run, going to be good size, especially after a couple of years. Be anxious to go see him in January. Didn't get a chance to do it because of the bowl game. Uh, and then along with Isaiah Chisholm, inside linebacker. Um, this was a battle. Coach Bray, this defensive staff, I think he really felt like he was a priority and he fit in to what we were trying to do defensively. He's helped us on the recruiting end, and which was a battle with himself, but he's helped us land some of these other guys in this class. Physical player, I can see him physically being ready to contribute, um, uh, you know, again, I don't want to oversell. Oftentimes being a freshman is not easy, but this guy's got a physical skill set that could impact things right away. And then in the back end, you know, we need some DBs and a couple of guys that have got some length um, at corner. Start with Jamad McCoy out in Texas. The length is there. Good baseball player, which was a fan. Had a nice home visit, was able to see him. Uh, before the signing date, feel like he can has all the the physical tools you need and what we're looking for at corner, the length we want, can run, and he's got good ball skills. Uh, Andre Jordan, and again, federal way, athletic, tough. He actually played both ways, can catch it, but we can't count on him to be able to cover guys for us. Played some big time receiver and DB um, at a federal way, another good kid. From, from that part of the state. And then Harlem Howard, um, a little bit later in the process, just watched his tape from his senior year, had a great year. Feel like he's gonna be physical at the safety position, be able to cover and tackle. Um, and so we were able to go over and see him as well before the, before the bowl game. So all in all, you know, seven of these guys will be here in whatever it is, two, three weeks, um, which is a huge help. The rest of the class will be showing up in the summertime. Which is, uh, which is totally good with us. I think we've covered a lot of positions which we wanted to get some, some young new talent in and create more competition in the room. 
And so we were, uh, I could get say, really pleased with how it all played out. Continued momentum of a season, finishing off. Can't thank the recruiting staff and the whole staff for the work that goes into this thing. We feel like these guys fit our place and can play football and are good dudes and school's important to them. Okay, long-winded there, but questions? All right, Nick, go ahead. Nick? See the hand up? Yeah, I got it. I thought, I thought Hank had unmuted me. I was just saying, sorry about my voice. It's bad. Um, typically, you do these, these signing day press conferences in the afternoon, and you're doing yours at 11. Um, is that a sign of how confident you were you were able to get these guys in and, and sign them early and not have any issues on signing day? Yeah, I think we, we were definitely confident, um, you know, the couple of days leading into it, even more confident. Um, again, we these some of these relationships have been going on a long time. And so, uh, again, we felt confident that, yeah, today was going to be pseudo uneventful in the way it played out. And I think that goes back to the fit, the type of guys that we're recruiting. Um, they've chosen us over a long period of time, and we were confident nothing was going to change in the last hour. Hey, Angie. I got the same thing, Nick. It must have been a Vegas thing. Um, so, Coach Smith, I'm looking at the all-time commits from 24-7 Sports. And right now, Oregon State has two in Aiden Childs and Kelsey Howard that, that are in the top 10, first time since 2012. Do you feel that it's getting a little easier to get into some of these top prospects' homes than maybe it was a couple years ago? Without question. I mean, and, you know, the momentum, progress, winning, all of that helps. I think our message continues to resonate with more and more players. Um, I think that, you know, we, however, they're, they're rated this entire class. I think we've got an opportunity for everybody to be a real contributor and big time player here. I think that's played out over the last couple of years with some really good players that maybe that not the same type of attention on signing day. Um, not to take anything away from the career, high school career, like Aiden, Kelsey, have had those guys are good players. They had a bunch of options. Uh, we feel awesome that they they chose us because we we're, we're confident they can do some great things here. Hey, Ronald, go ahead. Uh, Coach, of course, there's more than just, you know, position numbers that go into these selections. What about this class did you feel like you were looking for as far as like characteristics in your players to continue, you know, the progression that Oregon State's going in? Yeah, I think that uh, there's no question that um, the characteristics of what, you know, Oregon State is about, you know, I think our team played it out this season of uh, being a great teammate, uh, development, working hard, competing, earning everything you get. Um, I think that th those selling points and being able to show that it's uh, it's worked, it's progressing, these guys uh, were about that. Uh, we do. We talk about school being important. I think these guys can go to the National Football League and get a college degree at the same time. I don't think you got to be only locked on one or the other, and we've got proof of it in the pudding on that the last couple of years of guys getting drafted and leaving with degrees and that stuff's important around here. And it's important to these guys that are, that are signing with us. Hey, Brennan. Jonathan, this is the second straight year that you guys have had not a lot of drama, you know, on signing day. I'm just kind of curious, is there any kind of, you know, is that what you guys are gaming for kind of heading into signing day each year? And do you think it's kind of the staff and your recruiting staff more specifically that's able to kind of get guys real firm? I think, yeah, the recruiting staff does a huge job in that. Again, we're pretty thorough in uh, the process, and the process uh, oftentimes is a year or longer. Um, you know, I'm into guys that make a well-thought-out decision. They take their time. They visit multiple places, and when they choose us, we feel confident uh, because they really thought it through, uh, and those are the type of guys we're looking for. And so the last couple of years, that's how it's played out, and we feel awesome about it. Hey, we'll circle back, Nick. Um, yeah, Jonathan, there's not a, a, a Pierce and no running back in this class. Um, do you feel like you'll be able to hang on to the guys you've got? Will you look for a guy in the portal? Depending on, yeah, hang on the guys we've got. I, you know, Sean's got a decision to make. Um, we'll, there's still another signing date in February. I think we got a lot to sell. If you're a running back, 
the way we've done things offensively the last couple of years, um, I think we we could be able to land one. And so we'll, time will tell on that. Uh, we feel awesome with the guys that are in the room currently. And if all of those guys stay around, um, if there's there's not a need, and I guess in my mind, but things can change. There's going to be players out there, and there's another signing date. Hey, Angie. Um, what's next? I mean, what positions now are you looking now to kind of finish off this class in the next month or so? You know, I, I, I really everyone will be looking at. Um, I go back to again your own your own roster current where guys are at. Uh, if it stays status quo, well, it, it's just time will tell. We're always going to be looking for players. Uh, we're going to use this month of January to continue to look for players. You know, obviously, the twenty four class will be a heavy emphasis. Um, we want to create competition in the room. And so if there's a player out there that we think can add to the competition, help us, whatever position, um, we're not going to be shy about signing them. Okay, Ronald? Uh, heavy on the defense in this class, once again, uh, was that sort of kind of just how it sort of played out for you guys? Or was there an emphasis on, you know, specifically building that depth on the defensive side of the ball? Um, well, you know, it wasn't like, oh, more defense than offense. We knew on defense we're going to – we had some really good players this year that are we departing, and so you're always trying to replace those. Um, you know, it's going even to specific DB, um, we'll lose some guys at DB, and we need to need to replace those. Line of scrimmage matters, and so it impact good players at line of scrimmage. We're always going to try to do that, especially on the defensive front and the edge of the defense. So um, – but there was no like emphasis of, hey, let's do less offense. We've got a lot of returning old linemen. Uh, so this class, you know, we got a couple really good ones we like. Just maybe a year from now, we'll be talking more about old line because we anticipate, you know, we got an older, older group up front. Okay, Brendan. Jonathan, how do you think you and your staff were able to kind of navigate the changing landscape that there is in college football recruiting, particularly with this cycle? Um, I think we're, we're authentic. Um, there's no question the landscape continues to change. Um, and we, we got to be aware of that. We got to be able to be unique in our messaging. Um, we want to be a place of substance. Um, at the same time, the, uh, as the landscape changes, we got to continue to navigate. Um, I think we got a great message. We've got a great place. Um, you're looking for 20 to 25 a year that fits your spot. Um, and I say 20 to 25 years, you know, that, that number moves a little bit um, up or down. But ultimately, we feel confident 20 years, on average, 20 guys a year that fit our place, that can play football at a high level and contribute to our locker room. We, we feel confident we've done that again. Okay, Erica. Hi. So uh, you talk about Kelsey Howard having such a great personality, and I actually got the chance to meet him in Vegas and experience that firsthand. And he was just so excited to, I mean, talk to me. He was already like, oh, can I get on your show? All that. So what does it mean to have guys that are not only so talented, but are just so excited to play at Oregon State? And like you said, really chose this program because they want to be there, just already having that support and hype from this class. That, that's a little bit why I think it was uneventful at the end of the line. I think a lot of these guys really feel confident in their decision, want to be here, excited about it. Uh, we are looking for guys that, uh, you know, are multifaceted. Like I say, school and being important, football being really important, uh, being talented and on and off the field. And that's a, that's a guy who can, it, it, doing his own music and uh, bubbly personality. You guys are really going to enjoy getting to know him over the next couple of years. Okay, Les? Yeah, Coach, with the timing of this signing period um, overlapping with the bowl season, um, do you think there, there's is this calendar, does this make sense? Is, is there a better way to do this, in your opinion, that maybe wouldn't push you guys in, in so many directions at the same time? Yeah, you know, it's it's something that to look at without question, because some of you, yeah, it might be a disadvantage in ways to not be able to use a full week of traveling recruiting, getting on people's turf, homes, um, when you're spending it at a bowl site. At the same time, I think going to a bowl game, playing a big time opponent, experiencing that week, and then obviously winning the game, that helps in recruiting. People taking notice of that. So 
there's, I guess there's value on both sides of it. Um, I don't get a strong opinion on, on the schedule itself, I guess, to just, we're going to navigate what we, the cards were dealt. And I think we did a great job of it, to be honest with you, with the week we had and, and the way we finished the game and now where we're finishing it on signing day. Okay, Nick. Yeah, um, Jonathan, you mentioned uh, Deshaun Fenwick needs to make a decision. Um, you got some other guys, Oladapo. I don't know if uh, Alex Austin, is he is he coming back or is he still deciding Omar Hodges? Really, all those guys are still kind of deciding, which I appreciate out of those guys because they're taking their time, finishing the year, getting all the information. Um, and I'm going to give them the opportunity to kind of announce their decisions. Currently, though, uh, I'm really pleased with the process they're taking uh, to, again, evaluate the information uh, and then make a call. And I think they make their best decisions when they take the time to get the information. That's what they're doing. Okay, hey, Ronald. Uh, obviously, Ben went out there and <laughs> balled in the bowl game, but the quarterback position seems to be somewhat still of a talking point amongst at least fans. Um, what exactly were you guys looking for at that quarterback position? And what do you see in Aiden Chows and what kind of competition he can bring to that room? Yep, we're always, every time we recruit a guy that he's going to get opportunity to compete, especially a guy that's arriving early in January, Aiden's going to get a good amount of reps in the spring to be able to compete and go. There's no question that Ben played well in that game uh, to finish. He, he, I think he played his game continues to get better and better. Um, did an awesome job this year. I mean, 7-1 as a starter. Uh, that's tough to do better than that. Just like every position, we're always going to try to create competition in the room. And Ben knows that, just like Joshua Gray knows that. And, you know, Skyler, all the guys know that. And so uh, we'll, we'll see how things continue to play out. Um, but Ben will be ready to compete in, in spring ball, just like Aiden Childs will. And, and like I mentioned, every guy on the roster. Okay, Brendan. Uh, Jonathan, just real quick to confirm, uh, which guys are going to be enrolling early? And then upon uh, that, uh, you mentioned it a little bit earlier with a few guys, but any more guys that could potentially stand out to play early just right off the right off the cuff? Yep. So arrivals in January, Aiden Childs, Zach Carr, Montrell Hatton, uh, Taz Reddix, Thomas Collins, Kelsey Howard, Nico Taylor. So seven of them confirmed to be here at be here to start school the first, second week of January. Um, again, I, I want to be careful. I think all these guys have an opportunity to, to contribute early and even contributions, though, you know, special teams opportunities at their position. Uh, physically, again, I think, you know, guys that are closer, D linemen all got enough size. Isaiah Chisholm's physical enough and ready to go. Wouldn't shock me if one of these corners gets in the, at least the two deep by the, the fall. Uh, receiver wise, I think all those guys physically are ready to contribute, but we got some other guys in the room and you know how many wideouts we do play wouldn't shock me if we got a true freshman or two that are in the rotation by the fall uh, and Aiden's going to get opportunities starting in January. Okay, Nick. Yeah. Uh, when, when do you, uh, when have you, you have not met with players yet have you is that coming like when they get back right after january um you know we'll do some recap no i have not met with players i mean I, the last time i seen those guys a lot of them were in that locker room after the game which was awesome a bunch of fun um but majority i say over half the roster left front directly from las vegas back home to enjoy christmas break here which is well deserved so no we won't be getting face to face with guys until january yeah, Nick, you're the last one with your hand raised. Yeah, well, I, I guess what I was going to follow up with, but you you have not lost many many players to the portal yet. When you have these meetings, are, are you, you're anticipating losing a few af, after you meet with players, are you? Um. Yeah, well, again, we met with all these guys before the bowl game. Uh, when we had that, there's a week after the duck game, and then we couldn't be on the road. So, uh, you know, anticipating this day and age in college football. Yeah, I it wouldn't shock me that we'd lose a, a couple guys. Um, I do think we got a good thing going. Um, so I don't see a, a mass exodus out of here. Okay, I see no more hands raised. Any more questions? 
All right, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Okay. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Merry Christmas.